Well, hello, shiny, crafty people. Tim Totten here, and welcome back to the channel. You know, a couple of months ago, or I don't know how long ago now, I made a video about how to do a, a special quick release uh, towel for your kitchen, specifically to go on the the handle or the uh, the pull handle of your um, of your stove. Now, I've seen a lot of other really cute versions that use a pot holder with a towel, and so I want to show you my version of that because it's very quick, a lot easier than the other stuff. Uh, that they make, but also because it can really fit someone's decor of their kitchen. And so I just went ahead and got a pot holder and a towel, and this is what I made. Now it's not new, this has been done many, many, many times before, but I'm gonna show you the super fast way to do this. And really, it's just one single stitch, no cutting whatsoever, and a button, and now you've made a lovely gift for someone. It's a great housewarming gift or a Christmas gift to somebody who has everything, but you wanna give them some some things that really fit their kitchen. And by the way, this entire thing cost me $1.25 for the towel, and I got two of these for $1.25. So in fact, that's like, what, 62, 63 cents? So for less than $2, I made this to give to someone. All right, join me down at the cutting table and I'll show you how this goes together. This project is actually really easy because we just need some, a, a um, pot holder. And I have this two pack of pot holders. It's gonna let me make two different uh, of these. And then you need a kitchen towel. And I'm gonna use this cute one here or one of these and some pins. And I'm gonna just use this um, button that I made out of a piece of cardboard and some material, but you could easily make buy buttons anywhere. I just don't happen to have any right now. And I don't wanna run to the store just for buttons. So I'm gonna use something that I made and it's super easy. So let me show you what we're gonna do from here. I'm gonna go ahead and make this particular version and we'll take off the um, the plastic hanger. This is one that I bought at the Dollar Tree. So, so here in the U.S. in 2023, 20, it was a dollar twenty-five for this one particular uh, item. And we're gonna open it up. And I'll probably go ahead and iron this flap. But it, you know, it's up to you what you want to do. And then I'm gonna open up my pot holder, also a dollar twenty-five. But I got two of them for that price. And we're basically gonna, I'm gonna cut this out of the inside. I don't really want that in there. And we're going to sew these two pieces together. Uh, it's literally a little bit of organizing how you're gonna do it. So it's gonna go in the middle there. And then you have to fold this to make it look the way you want it to look. So I've gotta get this to fit the side here. And then I'm gonna add the button here so this can go over a onto um, any type of handle you want it to go to. So there's a couple ways to do this. You can certainly just fold it back into like thirds the way you want that. And this is about the same width as this piece here, right? Like that. And that would be fine. Or you can give it a little more flair. So if you have one that maybe didn't have imagery, you might want to go where you centered this and, and then it had a little flair when it sat on the table or on the, on the thing. I don't like that though, because I don't really want it to, um, I don't want to miss the imagery in the center. You know, like if I did it that way and hooked it on, then I'd miss all of that in the center. The other option would be to fold it that same way on the back. So I could flip it to the back and do this to where it was, they sort of meet a bit in the middle like that, so that gives a bit of a of a look to it. So when I flip it over, then this goes on, and that would be fine too. So I might do it that way. And the best way to do that, let me flip it back over to show you, is to lay it completely open, and then figure out how wide you want this to be. So you want it to be as wide as, or close to as wide as this particular item and maybe you put a pin in it or you make a mark but I'll put a pin here sort of I don't want to go any wider than that I don't want I want to fold at least it there and the other one the same thing and I could go over to the to my iron and go ahead and iron those in if I chose and then you would fold at that point and then back out so it covers out a little bit like in other words you want it to come out a little beyond you could do that so that when you flip this entire thing over you get that sort of look to it 
and now this entire piece will fit on there. But I got to take out the I got to take out the pins. So my suggestion would be go ahead and iron this now in this way or pin it along the top and then flip it over and take your pins out. So I will pin this along the top here. I'll come in and give some pins. If I was doing this at my ironing board, I could just iron it right now. So maybe you could do it at your ironing board and that would be a better plan. This is so <laughs> easy to do. Like it's crazy how easy this is to do. Because well, how long has that taken me? A minute or two to get all this put together? So I'm going to go back in there and take these other pins out. See them here? Those are coming out. All right, that's been handled. The only other thing I do is need to make sure I have the center. So I'm going to flip it over and make sure I know where the center is by folding it in half to this edge. And then what I will do is just put a pin on each side. Now I'm gonna make it to where they stick out because when I go to lay this flat, I wanna be able to see them outside of here. Okay, so now I've done that. I'm gonna lay this back to flat. My pins are helping that it's holding it all in place. Now I have to decide how I want the this piece to go. Do I want it to go around the handle and then clip, or maybe I don't want to see this part. So I want that on the inside. So this half to be on the inside. When it goes, when the handle is here, it's going to cover over. And maybe it's easier if the button is in the front. So, well, these are both the same on either side. So it doesn't matter which one's the front. But I do want to put the part where I can still see a little bit of that tag facing up because this is going to close when we put it on. Now, I do want to find the center of this item as well. The center of my... Uh, pot holder. So I've done that. And you could, again, you could do this with chalk. You could iron this in, whatever's best. And then I'm just going to line up those two pins on this side, the two pins on the other side. In fact, I could probably e more easily do this upside down. Look at that. Then I'm going to be able to see it a little easier. So I line those up together and I can play a little bit with how this all lines up there we go get that lined up because i'm only going to sew right across the top of this so i'm going to transfer a pin into that transfer this pin in here now if you wanted you could easily and i'm, I'm going to do it because i think it would be helpful to you to see i'm going to put a mark across there so that i know where to stitch because i'm not going to see this you can use a water soluble, whatever you wish to do. I'm going to go from the two pins that I know are marking the middle, which are the pins that are in the, the um, cloth. And that shows me where I'm going to sew. And I will sew it on this side, which is going to make it easier. So let's go to the sewing machine and go ahead and stitch this on. All right, here at the sewing machine, I'm going to go ahead and put my fabric under the machine. I'll take some of these pins out because I know I don't need this pin anymore. I've marked that with the line. I still have pins here holding it in the in place. And I'm using black thread because that will match my pot holder. Now, because I know this is going to get a little wear and tear, I'm going to make sure that I backstitch along the front and the back. But that really is all it takes to put those two together. And then now my goal is just to take out all of my different pins, get all those out of there, and then I'll show you what this looks like over at the back at the cutting table. So here we go. I finished doing that. So you'll see, here is my piece. Let me give you a little different angle. There we go. A little further out. There it's been done. Flip that up in the back. And now I have that item finished, except I need to add my, to stitch on my little, um, my cute little button that I made. So I'm going to do that uh, real quick. 
and then um, I'll come back and show you how this works. In fact, what we'll do is we'll zoom to my house and show you how it works on my own, uh, my own stove. All right, so here I am at my own kitchen and I have that piece. I'm gonna bring it up, I'll try to do this with one hand. <laughs> and I just literally pull the button. Oh, this is so much fun trying to do it with one hand. Oh, there it goes. Look how good that looks. Pulled over and see right there on the front. All right, so that's how you make this in such a short period of time. I hope you enjoy making this really cute gift you can give to somebody. And until next time, stay crafty. Bye for now. Whew, I didn't think that was gonna work.